Hello, my name is Sue, and I'm going to do, try to do a string pour for you today. I have my paints all mixed up with um, Floetrol, and uh, for the background, I'm actually using uh, White House paint. It seems to work pretty good for me for a background. So I will just mix it up a bit and show you usual fluidity for me. I usually use forks to mix it up because not only can I see lumps, but I can kind of see the fluidity pulling through the tines. And it seems to break up clumps better for me than just a popsicle stick. Usually I sit there and just after I get it all mixed I'll bump it and get the air bubbles to rise. But with this background I'm going to pour white and I'm going to add a little bit of green to it for a background. So first I'm going to put on the white and spread it around. Usually I spread it around with a fork and for a uh, or Actually, I use a hair thing. But usually I'll pour the white if I'm doing a white background. I'll actually bump the canvas a couple times because that seems to do better for me. For popping the air bubbles, they're in paint. And then I'll slowly tilt and spread it around with my fork. Until I get this paint kind of spread out all over. And I use the same fork all the time. I just wash it in between. I found for a background, especially for 16 by 20, I usually need about 14 ounces to cover the sides good, to get a good fluid covering. Now for the string art, I'm actually going to get it a little bit thinner just because I don't want great big lumps in my paint. And sorry about the sound. All I have is this phone, but until I get a camera, I wanted to start sharing some of my experiments with you. Because if I can inspire one person to paint for therapy, because it is amazing what it has done for me and with my Lyme disease. And I, um, <laughs> I always strain my Floetrol when I get it, because I have found it is very inclined to have lumps in it, but sometimes I am not straining my acrylic paints that I mix with them, and that's where I am actually finding the lumps now. But this does actually smooth out once you get um, pouring on it. It smooths out and uh, even when you're doing the string art on it, I always like to make sure all my sides are well covered. There's still quite a bit of paint on here and there's some bubbles, so I'll drop it. And there's one that didn't come out. But then I'll move the paint around. Ah, it's not a, it's not a bubble, it's a lump. But for this, I actually want the white background to be quite thin. Otherwise, you will find you'll pull up a lot of paint with it. A 
I like to make sure all my sides are well covered. Because I found somebody posted an idea about wonderful floating frame, which I am going to try. And so far I haven't worried about my back. I am going to learn how to professionally do it so I can cover my back. Now I wanted to do some purple irises or, you know, give it a try. But I also thought maybe I'd want some green in the background for leaves. You know, when you see my white spread out, you can see it's spread out very thin. Not thick at all. It's just a good coating on there. Now the green, I was thinking, I mixed some of my darker green with a little bit of white. And thought maybe I'd pour it on the bottom and tilt it so I get kind of like green grass is coming up behind the irises. Anyway, it's my dream, my experiment. I'll show you what I'm going to try. So I'm going to just pour this paint all along the bottom. And let it go up in amongst this. Now, I also think I'm going to use my, my fork and pull some grass up. Let it intermingle because I'm still going to do my irises, but just to get some green up in the background. Maybe even pull some of the white down. I never know what I'm going to do. Normally, I would pull my uh, fork out and clean it between each one, but not this time. I'm going to bang the bubbles out again because I've got bubbles in, and I'm going to bring the white back down. I'm going to break it, tip it up. So I didn't realize it hadn't run off the canvas the other way. See, I'm nervous for my first video, so it is what it is. I'm always scraping the bottom droppings off and just putting them underneath my, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. I guess it's a grill I got out of something. Now I'm going to tip it back down. Popping any bubbles I see along the way. And just let it run. Because this I just really want just kind of a wispy. I might have got too much green in there, but you know what? It's an experiment. I'm going to let most of it run off the bottom. There will be a stream of it. But the only way I can correct that big stream is to pour some white down at the top. So. I'm just going to empty my cup there and let that run down. Just because I didn't want that much green in the background. But I've never felt... I can't do something, I just change it to where I like it.
So there, the green and the whites coming down, more the way I was envisioning it. I'll let this pull down. I have my string soaking right now. And you see, right there, I dip too close. But, as old Bob Ross said, there's no mistakes, there's just happy accidents, so just let it go. And yes, there's a lot of paint wasted. That's one, one thing I don't like about pouring is I hate wasting paint. But I think I'm getting closer and closer to the background I was looking for. Just a wispy green. And this will keep changing as it dries. Just kind of a wispy green background. Now I have my thread soaking. So I'm going to put my paint out on my uh, lid. I'm going to put some purple. purple for now. Now I have a waste cup that I actually just sit there and wring my string out into. So I thought I'd show you that because I'm going to do painting with that too. But I've got my string right now soaking in water, kind of stuck together. But one is about uh, It's about 12 inches long. I still think in inches. I don't know why. I guess it's, I'm old school. But I'm going to sit there and just pull it through the purple paint. And I start thinking about, on this one, I think I want to do three flowers. So I'll get the string wet, but not over wet. Sometimes I have to dip it a little bit on the plastic here. So you can kind of see I've put it in this purple paint and then made sure there wasn't any big drops on it by just touching it to the lid. Now my first one I want up in the center top. So I'm going to put a loop and then I'm just going to pull it gently through the paint. And then stop. Now as you can see, well, if you saw, I pulled a whole bunch of green and white paint off. But when I lifted that string up, I held it over this cup and kind of squeezed it into it. It's hard to show you every move because, of course, I can't get it on camera. Well, I haven't learned how yet, but I will. Now I've dipped it in the purple paint again. Now I'm going to pull another loop through. First I'm going to put a loop on, lay it down, and pull it through. Now again, I have contaminated string, so I hold it over the cup kind of squeeze it through my gloved fingers, wipe it off. I got a towel always in my lap. Lay it down back in the purple paint. Make sure there's no big clumps. Lay it down again. Pull it in to the center. And you'll see how you get those beautiful colors. Hold it over my waste paint cup, wring it out again, rub my gloved fingers on my lap, 
Now, if you've ever noticed with uh, irises and lilies or whatever, they have leaves off the side. But first, I'm going to put the side one, or I'm going to put three on this. So I'm going to put one here, one here. I'm going to do the upward ones. Then I'm going to go back in and pull the lower ones. So I've got my paint wet again. Here's my medium or mid height one. There's the first one. Now you notice how it pulled through the paint? I will fix that as we keep going. I like a fuller one so I'm coming back in and just pulling it a little bit on this side. Seeing what it does. Hold it over my waist cup. Bring it off, wipe my fingers, do it again. I was figuring until I'm happy, I'm going to keep dipping. They are much happier. Got to remember to be gentle through that paint. I maybe should have put that flower lower, but is what it is. Another loop. And yes, I should have. But, you know what? Live and learn. Now I see I should have went down five or six inches lower, but I didn't, so it is what it is. I'll finish this one up with a loop up this way. Ring it off. Put one in the center for kind of a throaty effect. Ring it off. again. Put it, loop it up because I'm not really happy with that one. Bring it up. Bring it off. You kind of get the idea. Just kind of bringing them up to the center. And now I'm thinking I should put some yellow on there. Maybe put it towards the bottom. This is some paint I have mixed up with Floetrol, etc. So maybe I should lay the loop in here, get the purple, and then maybe wet just a portion of it with yellow. Put it back in, bring it around, see what happens. Okay, so not that time. That time it's not showing up, but you get the idea. So let's put the middle and the outsides in yellow. Lay it down as a loop and bring it up because it might be enough just to show something. Nope. Too much paint in there. I'll pull a little bit out. Bring my string and just keep going. Never be afraid to make mistakes, because you know what? The only way any of us learn is by doing. See, I like that one better. And we'll see what it settles out to. I'm 
Now this one, I guess I'm going to have to start the big leaf up here and we'll do another one. Because I can see I messed up with that one. So I'll just put a big loop here, cross it over, bring it through, bring it off. Let's put another big one over here. Make a loop. Cross it over. Bring it in. Bring it out. Now I think this one has to be higher, so I'll put another layer in. Bring it in, meld it in, now I'm thinking I should almost bring in my big, big, big one and do a couple loops, but they're not all perfect. So, you just play there much better, much better. I almost think I want a bigger one there. See, it challenges your brain every time. Now I think I'll lay it in the yellow and see if that does anything different. Yeah, but now we see, maybe I should use longer strings. So I'll lay the purple in that part. And of course, the purple, the colors get dry because of course, it's not really hot in here, but I think your so string and whatever soaks up some uh, color throughout the process. Even though I soaked it first, And I'll put a little more yellow at the bottom because I want that yellow to come out a little bit more for the centers. You will kind of get a pile of paint, but it slowly flattens out as it dries. Well, I haven't found it yet, it hasn't. So now I'm going to lay this one down as a root and hopefully I can pull it up and get a little bit of the yellow to stay. See, I think my purple isn't pulling through like it did the other day. But it's a matter of consistencies. Like anything else, maybe my paint's a little thicker. It's a little warmer in here today. So I'm thinking it's just laying on top, but I'm not afraid to keep trying and see what happens. Bring a little bit more of the purple up for the center. And no, this 
isn't easy. Sometimes I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I hope it'll turn out. The way I'm thinking of. See, it's not as much today, but I'm just going to keep going because it's what keeps me going. Let's see what I can get out of this. See, I just don't think I got my paint the right consistency today. Funny how you can see it, but you can't see it. So I don't always think mine turn out. Still not doing what I want. But I'll keep playing until it does. No matter what, what is done, what love and what I want to get out of it. See, that's where I'm going to differ from other artists because I'm going to forget to talk until I get used to this. Then I start thinking, what can I do here? What can I do there? How can I bring that up? And then poof, I'm not here anymore. I'm there, which I guess is what it's about. But. I said, just have fun and paint. That's what it's about to me. Maybe today wasn't such a good idea. 
and get so frustrated with trying to build an account and oh and then trying to figure out the phone couldn't do that either so then it's like what the hell am I doing trying to do this? I don't know. I guess I just want to get other people interested like I am. That's all. And I guess if I get one person doing this, I didn't do any painting before. Well, then my goal has happened. And I will be happy. But many times, I'm not happy with my first thing either. So I just keep working it. And sometimes I overwork it and then it gets thrown out. I'm sure you've all done that. But the only way we learn is to do it. mistake, we'll never do a thing. And we'll never learn a thing. I do got a wild looking though. <laughs> Dip cup. Be interesting to see what I can do with that later. Or if I can do anything. Probably not, but that's all right. Do you see how it's all kind of about just having patience and not getting upset or not getting... Because you're always going to get different effects no matter what you do. I can't actually show you how to get perfect effects because I haven't learned it yet. I'm still learning. And I feel this needs more purple, so I'll pull another purple and see if I can float it more than pull it through. Now I think I might need... Mm. No. I need purple again. And you see how frustrating it can be. I felt I did something so fantastic the first time and then you try to replicate it and it's like, oh my god, I can't do it. But I guess I didn't want to replicate the same thing, but scoop some of this paint out of there because holy cow and that was a big mistake
definitely a big mistake. And I'll probably scrap this one, but it is what it is. Isn't it? It is what it is. I learned a long time ago not to get upset because you don't get what you want. Because next time you will. the colors, but I thought, well, what the hell. Try it. And I don't like it. But, leave it set and see what happens. Right? I do reuse my cups all the time, so I usually put the plastic back on. I can reuse it. And I'm just missing the one for the green. Not happy, not happy, but you never know. Tomorrow, I might be happy with it. So, let's let it dry. You never know. Tomorrow. You might be happy with it. More so than today. <laughs> <laughs> 